So this video is just a little exploration to something that I found out. Maybe everybody knew this, but I didn't. I've been trying to get this game to run on the Amiga 1200 and it had a dodgy floppy drive in it. So the other day on a live stream, I actually swapped out the floppy drive uh, so I could get it working. And then I put this disc in the 1200 and I find out this game still doesn't run. And I'll show you what this does. So it looks like it's booting, but I know this disc is valid and I know that the drive in here is a good drive because I know it can boot this disc. But this is what happens when I boot the 1200 into it. I get the startup string, it does kind of work a bit and it's trying to access the floppy disk and it's just not really doing much. If I click the mouse button, not really getting anywhere. So it's still trying to get at the disk and it's stopped. Oh. Nope, no, it's carried on. And uh, now it's just like continually trying to access the floppy disk and there's a, there's a black screen. I initially thought it was the drive of the floppy disk, but they both verify good. So it's not that. Somebody in the live stream, I think it was BAM1200, suggested, why don't you turn off the instruction cache? Now I thought, well, that's never gonna work, is it? But I thought I'll try it. So you start the Amiga up holding down both mouse buttons and this is Kickstart 3.2, by the way. So there were some suggestions that it's Kickstart 3.2 causing the problem. But the reason why I don't think it's that is because most games, like especially ones that boot from disk, generally don't use the Kickstart. They will just turn everything off and just bash the metal inside the Amiga. So they'll, they'll do everything themselves. They'll do their own disk reading and writing and everything. So I don't know that Toki's doing that, but it might be doing that. Uh, it's a very good chance that it is. They could use the kickstart, but the chances are they don't do very much with it other than just turn it off and then go solo after that. But if I go to boot options on the 3.2, I can disable the CPU cache. So this is something specific to the 68020, which the Amiga 1200's got. But the 68020 has a 256 byte CPU cache, which I think is just for instructions that it's reading in from the program where it's caching them and then it can execute them without having to access the memory bus again, which is fast and all modern processors do this. So it's quite a new thing, but also, you know, the sign of the future was coming. Now, if I turn this off and I say use, and now I hit boot and the disk's in the drive, we'll see what happens. So we got this far before. And it's kind of just stopped accessing that. I think that oh. Carried on straight away, actually. And there it is. And the game has started, which it didn't do before. And just to prove that it does work, there we go. Basically, the game kind of works. It's got a few graphical glitches, but other than that, it's working fine. That's not something I knew that the instruction cache in the 1200 is actually breaking the compatibility of some games, which is a real shame because you wouldn't think that that would be the case. All the instruction cache is gonna do is help the Amiga to run a bit faster. Now, I can only imagine that this game has been coded in a way that either it expected something to tick at a certain rate, maybe the code's going too fast and it's broken maybe the disk loading. Because remember, it didn't do a guru meditation or anything. And the fact that you can disable it shows that you can get this thing working. So it's a real shame that the compatibility is gone because of that. What other reasons could be that the instruction cache is causing this particular program to fail? Because it must be something in this program that's causing it. I've got the games like Cannon Fodder that work perfectly fine on this Amiga with the instruction cache turned on. Now Cannon Fodder was written probably about the year, I think it was 93 and this came out in 94. So they may have had their hands on one or they may have just not done something that this game is doing. So before I carry on, let's just, first thing I like to do is get WinUAE out and see if this same problem happens in WinUAE when I emulate the Amiga 1200. I'd just like to know that. So in WinUAE, I've just set up a basic A1200, nothing fancy, two megabytes of chip RAM, 68020, and the floppy drive is set up to run at normal speed. So I haven't got the floppy, the emulated floppy sounds on because they're so annoying. We won't be able to hear the floppy sound or see the lights or anything, but let's just see if it does the same thing. So we got that far on the real 1200 and then it kind of got stuck here, I think. Like normally in the, in the actual game, you just press the space bar or you press the fire button and here it's doing nothing. WinUAE looks to be broken in the same way that the real 1200 is. So let me reset it and I'll hold down both mouse buttons and we'll see if we do the same thing we did on the 1200 of 
disabling the instruction cache. And let's see if that fixes it in WinUAE as well. If it does, that's a big plus for WinUAE. So I just go to boot options and I disable the CPU cache and then we'll just boot again and see what we get. So this worked on the real 1200. Let's see if it works here. And there's our ocean screen. And I think if I press fire, is it fire? And has it worked? Yeah. So WinUAE is behaving exactly like the real 1200 is. The real 1200 can't load this game with the instruction cache on. And this game is doing exactly the same thing. That's a real plus for WinUAE because that shows that how accurate its emulation is. It's really good. And as a last test, let's just turn the floppy drive up to 800% speed. And I'll just make sure that the CPU cache now is on. This is the mode that wouldn't normally load on the Amiga. Yeah, so the CPU cache is on. Now let's just boot with the 800% floppy speed and let's just see if this works. So the 800% floppy speed isn't something I can do on a real A1200, but here I can. That's the main screen we get there. Oh, and it's moved on quite quickly. Yeah, and that's totally working. This kind of shows that what's actually happening is that Toki's disk loader is actually not working correctly. It must be based around certain timing or something like that. And if the CPU runs too fast, it probably can't load from the disk correctly. Because you've got to remember, it's not using the kickstart routines, well, at least I don't think it is. It's, they've probably written their own disk loading routines and they're probably not very robust to actual changes in speed of the CPU. So they're actually, you know, waiting for the disk and stuff like that, and then it's just not working correctly. So that's my suspicion of what's going on there. And either turning off the CPU cache to slow the CPU down has fixed it, or in our emulation, we've sped up the CPU and that's fixed it. So that's a bit of a weird thing that you can't normally do on an A1200, but it's, it's kind of showing you that that's what's going on. And it was also a kind of indication that it was happening because when it actually happened on the real 1200, we didn't get a guru meditation. The program didn't crash. It just kind of failed to load the next section. I think that's what's going on is that their disk loader is not robust to like a super fast CPU or something like that. And we can actually have a look at this document for the 6020, which I don't think is the document for the exactly for the one that's in the A1200, but it's pretty much because the A1200 has got this 68E C020, which is just a, a cost reduced 68020, which doesn't have 32 address lines. It's only got 24, so you can only address 16 megabytes of RAM instead of a full four gig. So that was fine for the Amiga at the time, so they used that because it was cheaper. And it's got a section about on-chip cache memory. It incorporates an on-chip uh, cache memory as a means of improving performance. The cache is implemented as a CPU instruction cache and is used to store the instruction stream prefetch accesses from main memory. And I think if you read into it, what it's saying is whenever it goes to get an instruction, it's going to put it in the cache, but I think it's also going to get some future instructions as well, like the next ones in a row. And that means that it's possible that the CPU can run a bunch of instructions without having to go back to the bus. So the thing about the, the data bus in computers with DMA is that that data bus can be in use by something else. So the CPU would normally have to wait, but if it's already got the stuff in the cache, then it doesn't have to wait. It can just carry on with the next instruction. And it actually says that down here in systems with more than one bus master, e.g. a processor and a DMA device, reduced external bus activity increases overall performance by increasing the availability of the bus for use by external devices without degrading the performance. So what it, the, a DMA device is the floppy drive, basically, that is a DMA device. So it's possible that this code that's running and when it's trying to access the floppy drive, maybe to load the next section in Toki, is actually now running so fast that there's something about it, the code that isn't robust enough to actually work correctly. And maybe it thinks that the disk hasn't loaded or hasn't worked, and then it just tries again or something like that. So that's interesting, but that's what I suspect is actually going on there in Toki and possibly in other games as well. Maybe they all used a very similar loader that was available to everyone and they just kept, kept reusing the same one. So that's quite interesting. I wonder how many games that do their own reading like Toki have got this problem. In fact, I know of one other definitely because uh, New Zealand Story also doesn't work. Until you turn the instruction cache off, New Zealand Story also doesn't work. It doesn't guru meditate, it doesn't crash, it just doesn't continue on. And this is free with the Amiga 500 pack. Clearly this is a much older game. So I've got Cannon Fodder here that came out in 1993. So it was probably designed with the Amiga 1200 in mind. So there it is. Disabling the instruction cache can get your game to run. It's a bit of a shame that some of these older games, the fact that they don't use the kickstart, which was intentional, they did it to save memory. They were trying to get these things in, in a small memory footprint. I'm, I think both of these games probably work with half a megabyte of memory. And to do that, they couldn't turn the kickstart on and use the OS because it just sucked up too much memory. 
So they wrote their own, but unfortunately it's not compatible. And the Amiga 1200 is therefore, unfortunately, less compatible than it should be. But I imagine if you've got stuff that runs in the OS and, and works with the OS, it's probably fine. So there you go, I thought that was quite interesting. Turning off the instruction cache gets stuff to work. Maybe a lot of people already knew that, but I didn't know this until yesterday. So I'm just letting everyone know the same thing.